Hi, and welcome to the NBA show, where today we're going to discuss NBA Max contracts. So let's get to it. NBA Max contracts, let's be honest, they can be a little bit confusing. Because if you're a player who's played less than six years in the league, or have what you call less than six years of service, YOS, basically you're limited to 25% of the salary cap if you're on a max contract. Now that amount increases to 30% of the salary cap if you have between seven and nine years of service. And finally, of course, if you make it to over 10 years in the league and you're still a max contract player, you can earn up to 35% of the salary cap. Now, there are exceptions to these rules, obviously, but in the grand scheme of things, there is a great debate whether or not the max contract system is actually working. Because for a player like LeBron James or Giannis Antetokounmpo for that matter, one could argue, are they not worth significantly more than what the NBA contract system allows them to get paid? So for me to actually get a grip on this, I've brought in Yahoo Sports contributor Keith Smith to help me out. Keith, welcome to the show. Now, let's just start with the very, very basic here. Is the max contract system working? When you compare both teams and player aspirations, you know, they, they are different beasts altogether. Obviously, teams would want longer team control. Players would want more flexibility. So let's boil it all, all down. Is it working? I, I think that's it's complicated and I promise I'm not riding the fence, but I think to an extent it's working. I think it works in the idea of you have the ability to retain players if they're your own player. And, but that also relies on that player wanting to be retained as well. It's not quite as easy as just saying, Hey, here's a whole lot of money and you must take it right. It doesn't work that way. Those players have to want to stay with that team. Um, I, I think that there are definitely problems. In the system, I think sometimes the max contract has become an albatross too many times for some of these teams. And I think that has caused issues. And I think one of the challenges is with the structure and the tiers of max contracts where the players, it's all based on years of service. And when they get the most amount of money is when they are at their oldest and deepest into their career. And certainly there are the LeBron James of the world and the Kevin Durant's who are still very much worth all that money. But for far more players, you would rather have paid them earlier when you were getting more production out of them. Patrick Mahomes just signed a 10 year extension worth approximately $450 million and that's in the NFL. So my question here is, could that actually be one avenue that the NBA could explore to maybe actually pay players, at least the very max players, a larger percentage, not just of the cap, but a fair representation of what they're worth. Is that an avenue the NBA and the players union, the NBPA could explore? Yeah, I, I think if you remember back several uh, collective bargaining agreements ago, there was no max on the years and, and teams were getting themselves into trouble because they were signing these guys to these very long contracts. And then either the team or the player decided they didn't want to continue that relationship anymore. And it was a problem because right now in the NBA, the longest the guy's under contract for is, is really five years. And five years, you know, you can probably get through that even if it goes really badly. Even then we still see guys force trades and teams say, we're done, we're moving on from this guy. But imagine if that's 10 years or more than that, um, that becomes a massive challenge where it is, you know, how do we reconcile this of when we still have, you know, eight or nine years left to go on this contract and a year in, you know, the player doesn't want to be here anymore. So I, I don't know that that structure works. I like the limiting of years. Uh, there's a couple reasons why I like that it protects the player, it protects the team. If something changes in the situation that they want to switch um, and change up that relationship. I also like that it kind of keeps the league continually evolving and moving. I, I think that that's important. I think the NBA is uh, in many ways is that it's most interesting in its off season, uh, which is, you know, that, that can be tough to take uh, for those who love the game as part of it. But, but I do think that part is, um, you know, highly interesting. And I think that's driven be, because of the nature of the league where so few players are locked in beyond four or five years. So 
the Patrick Mahomes type style, I don't know that would really work in the NBA. So that's more for NFL and MLB purposes? Yeah, I think in Major League Baseball, it's it's just such a different beast and guys can be very much the same player in 10 years that they are today. In a lot of cases, I think in the NFL, it's more of a, the way their contract structures work is anywhere we're finding out with Patrick Mahomes, there's only, I wanna say it was like 50 to 80 million or so guaranteed of all that money. So it really is a, um, it's more of a year to year, even when, when it sounds like it's 10 years, you know, 450 million, it's really, you know, probably closer to three years, you know, 90 million or something along those lines. And then there's all these renewable years and all these years that become you know, guaranteed and those kind of things. NFL contracts are just very different in structure. So I think the way the NBA works, it would take a, a pretty massive change in agreement from all parties involved to be able to switch this to being a, uh, you know, something beyond what the current contract structures are. So you brought up the percentage of the cap that players are allowed to receive off the CBA agreement. So here's the thing. One thing that we've seen is that a lot of older players who've gone past 35% and 10 years of service th threshold are actually sitting on very, very large contracts that become sort of albatrosses and are problematic. Is there a way, in your opinion, where maybe we can find some sort of common ground where percentages are flip-flopped? So maybe instead of players earning their most of their money at the years of service between seven and nine, you stretch it out to six to 10, and that's where you can maybe earn 40% of the cap or the 35. And then when you get past the 10 year threshold and you're on, well, more or less the decline, that's when you actually take not a pay cut necessarily, but the percentage of the cap goes down. Could that be a way to finagle the system? Sure, yeah, and, and I think you could do it that way. Where you could do it is far as the um, contract structures are that you're paying them the most in those prime years, kind of the, the exact scenario you laid out somewhere in that six to 10 year range is when you're paying out the most money. I think the other option, if you wanted to still reward years of service, because I think that's part of what the Players Association wants to be able to do is take care of those older players in their waning years. So I think what you could do that would make it really um, interesting would be, let's say you're a signing a play to a five year maximum contract in, in to just keep the math somewhat simple. Let's say it's five years, 150 million um, in that, you know, that, that cap environment. What I would like to see them be able to do is rather than that increase year to year, if as long as the five years, 150 million is what you're saying, this is what I'm committing to player X for. Then what I would like to see them do is if you want to fully front load that by offering the highest amount possible that the player would make in the fifth year, but put that on the first year. So then it back, it goes down from there. I would love to see them do that as it is today in a max deal, you can only offer up to the max amount and then it, then you can build off of that. I would like to see them take it from the max in that fifth year, allow that to be year one and then back it down from there. So at least the salaries are dropping somewhat as you know, generally the player, uh, the player's caliber of play is dropping as well. Another idea that's floating around is actually attaching the percentage of the cap to the player's contract without taking into account like the raw monetary value. So basically, whether the cap drops or it increases, those 30 to 35% that a max player is receiving, those are just steadfast all across the field for the, for the remainder of his contract. Is that a way to do things? Yeah, I, I think that's, I, I think they attempted to do that, but that is a, um, that that is a first year salary only um, in, in that, that uh, you know, setup where, you know, maximum salaries are 25, 30 or 35 percent of the cap. Uh, but as you go into it, I think there is the ability to say in year one, it's going to be 35 in year two, it'll be 40 in year three, it'll be 45 or in, in you'll know, play around with those and say percentage of that. I think that's interesting to do. I don't know how much the players want to go for that because I think they want to lock into more firm fixed numbers because if we ever have another situation like the one we're currently in and the cap drops significantly if that is ultimately the way this plays out then also so will their salary and i don't know that that's something that the players really want i think that's more the owners would rather be protected but on the flip side the players would like to have it you know go up if, if we see cap spikes like we've seen in the past one other suggestion that's really interesting that i've seen put out there is what if you did a for one player on each roster you 
you could offer a, um, let, let's call it a super duper max, and you could pay them almost whatever you want, but only up to X amount counts against your cap. So if you really, you know, the Milwaukee Bucks, and you want to pay Giannis Antetokounmpo, you know, $60 million a year, you can do that, but only, you know, 35 of that counts against your cap or something to that effect. I think that is something that is being bandied about and discussed is, is that a potential option in the next collective bargaining agreement? Okay, Keith, thank you so much for your time. Thank you, I appreciate you having me. That was Keith Smith from Yahoo Sports breaking down the max contract for us and basically try to actually look at the ways that we could improve upon it. One of his major ideas, was, which I really found interesting, is actually kind of flip-flopping the max contract system. So let's ignore percentages for a second. But as he stated, which is completely accurate, the way that a max contract is structured is that you get the max contract from the year one and then it increases, Keith is basically saying instead of having it increase, it should decrease. Not that the total amount should change, but rather that the vast majority of that contract is getting paid during a player's prime instead of post his prime. I love that idea and I think it's something that the NBA as a whole would benefit greatly from. Teams wouldn't have to salary dump that many guys to fit certain guys under the salary cap. It would just make things way more streamlined financially. So that's a great idea on Keith's part. I'm all in.